Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Today I'm going to show you how to build a lightweight fishing tackle box which also doubles as a seat box with independently adjustable legs. And here it is. As you can see, padded lid, opening, storage inside. You can make this to whatever size you like, but I will give you some rough dimensions as we go. Obviously, it will lock down in position. Independently adjustable legs, so I can adjust to any bank conditions I wish. And a strap which I stole off another bag which is lying around in the shed. I go match fishing. So I go around with the tackle box, come seat box, which is quite heavy when everything's in it and it contains just about everything except possibly the kitchen sink. Let me show you that now. This is the one I use all the time. I use it for matches, pleasure sessions, quick sessions, long sessions, and it's a good box. I made it some years ago. Um, it's relatively heavy, although nowhere near as heavy as some of the boxes you buy from the tackle shop or over the internet. If we lift the lid, as you can see, there's lots and lots of tackle in there, all sorts of stuff. But also, if I take out the two locking pins, if we look at the trays, again, there's, I'll just close that down, there's all sorts of stuff in trays, and there's six of them. Again, it was made to suit my own requirements, but really, you just don't need to take this much tackle half the time you go fishing. Now, obviously, if you're going to a commercial or anywhere where you can park up on the riverbank or the, the lakeside, next to where you're going to fish, well, it doesn't really matter about weight. But if you're going to be going somewhere where you need to walk a bit further, or if you're getting old like me, um, a lighter weight box often is, is a better thing to be taking and something as heavy in this as heavy as this but really we're here today to talk about a lightweight fishing tackle box which gets you to places where you wouldn't necessarily otherwise go and also of course bear in mind if you don't have a lot of tackle why would you want to go to the expense of spending hundreds of pounds or hundreds of dollars buying a, a big heavy seat box off the internet especially when you can make it yourself and get some fun out of it so the first thing you're going to do then is to build the metal frame and the materials you're going to need for that are over here. We've got some 1 inch or 25 millimeter um, aluminium tube. Um, this is a thickness of 1.6 millimeters. Don't go any thinner than that because you need that sort of wall thickness for the strength. I have seen some at the DIY store with 1.2 millimeters. And frankly, I weigh just over 200 pounds or 100 kilos, um, and I don't think that would hold me. But I've been making these things out of this for the last 20 years, and I haven't had one let me down yet. So there we go then, 25 mil square tube. You're going to need a length of 16 millimeter round tube, and the absolute minimum again is 1.6 millimeters. But as you'll probably end up using these for legs, my view would be try and buy this in the three millimeter wall just for added strength on the legs and then this bit's a bit more decorative uh, which you'll see in a minute this is just some one inch 25 millimeter angle aluminium um, and we'll be cutting that off just to make the thing look nice tools wise you're going to need standard power drill driver something to cut holes with this is a step drill which will cut up to I think about 25 millimeters but anything up to that, and we'll be using the 16 millimeters today. Alternatively, a standard hole cutter at 16 millimeters. To hold it all together, just get some M6 uh, bolts. These happen to be 75 millimeters, but we're gonna cut them off anyway, as you'll see in a second. And that's pretty much all you need for the frame. So let's crack on and start cutting and assembling. So I've just been over and I've cut the first two lengths of uh, the square tube aluminium. This is the, the one inch square tube. Um, this happens to be 575 millimeters, but 
you can make it as long or as short as you want. It all depends on how big or small you happen to be and how big or small you happen to want the box to be. Um, I've also just taken the opportunity to use my cutter to drill a hole, a 16mm hole through here. It's about 10mm in from the edge, all the way through on both sides. And the same thing here, but on the 90 degree face to it. So, as you see, that's going to be for the legs, that's going to be for a support, and I've then done exactly the same thing at this end. Obviously there's a couple of other holes you need to drill. Um, this one here, uh, depending on the, um, the, the rivnet you're going to use in there, um, that will probably be something like 8 to 10 millimeters. but just measure the, the diameter of the rivnet and cut a hole to suit. This one is a 6 millimeter hole, because that's where the bolt's going to go down through, and you just do the same on the other side. Repeat this for the second rail, and then we can start to look at the construction of the, the framework. So I've part assembled the frame just to show you exactly how the thing goes together. I've cut off two of the 16mm um, cross pieces. Um, they are 350mm long and they fit straight through the end of the, the rail there. And they will be bolted, which is the reason for the holes. Now I happen to have cut um, some of this right angle here, angle um, aluminium. It's uh, for decorative purposes but you don't necessarily need it, and you'll see why shortly. So for the purposes of construction, straightforward stuff. Just goes on there, and on here. You may find that it's a little bit awkward at first, but it does go down with a little bit of... There we go. So there we are, we're on on that one. Now all we've got to do is put the bolts in, as I've shown you on that one there. So as you can see, we've now got the cross supports in here. Um, we've already got a hole through the square tube aluminium, but we now need to just make that hole go all the way through there. Now I've pre-drilled it so you can see straight through it, and all we have to do next is to take a bolt and put it in. So because we've drilled these holes at 5.5mm, and this is a 6mm bolt, what that means is, we're going to make it create its own thread. I'm going to use uh, a nut driver on here, but you could just use a spanner if you want to. Put it in, make sure it's going the right way, and just gently make it turn. It's cutting a thread at the moment. Because it's aluminium, it will do that quite nicely. So just take it nice and slow, so it goes all the way through. There we go, through to the other side, and then it's gone all the way through, so now we can just... There we go. As you saw, it cut its own hole, and rather than put a bolt on there, and the reason for that will become obvious shortly, because I'm going to put a box on top of here, and I don't want nuts sticking out, I'm going to cut that off in exactly the same way as I've done on this side here. So that's the base frame assembled then. Uh, as you can see, the right angle aluminium has been just attached at the sides. It really just fills up the hole here, but it does allow somewhere for the, uh, the box to, to sit on top of if you want to. You don't have to, I just happen to like it, and it doesn't add much weight to it. Now this next part is where my box is going to be a little bit different to your box. Only slightly, um, and the reason being that I actually do this quite a lot, so I had these uh, little inserts, threaded inserts, uh, made up uh, a couple of years ago. Because I do this a lot, it's worth it for me. And what happens is, the inserts fit into the framework, and then we just put the, the nut on top. For your purposes, you're going to be using a rib nut which you'll buy at the local DIY store, and that's going to fit in like this. Okay. Now, mine had a, a, a nut to screw down onto it. Yours has to be squashed together. And for that, you're going to make yourself this simple tool. All it is, stainless steel, 6mm bolt, two or three washers, 
These are hexagon couplers and I've just drilled out the insides of them so as you can see they, they slide around. Little other washer here and a nut. And that's your tool to get that crimped on there. Now rather than trying to show you how to do all that now, in another um, incarnation of my YouTube experience, I did actually do a video on how to create this and how to fit it into the, um, the section of tube there. So I'll put a link in the, the video to how to get to that and then it'll be self-explanatory. It's really easy to do and it's really cheap to make these things and it comes in handy for the future as well if you want to do anything on your, on your car or other, other different projects that you may wish to do. So that's the rivnuts fitted then and I bought some of these little hand wheels or knobs. Um, you can often get them from the DIY store. If you can't get them there, uh, just go down to RS online and you can buy them separately there. Pretty cheap. And put them in. There we go. Then this is my simulated leg for now. Put that in and then just tighten up and we're nice and solid. So we'll be doing that for all four corners and again just for me I've actually gone off to the the UK um, and bought these. These are called um, Octoplus legs and they're pretty cheap it's just hexagonal aluminium. It is hollow but it's uh, about three millimeters or so thick but it has these nice feet on it. You don't have to buy this you can do exactly as I said before just buy the three millimeter circular stuff locally and that'll do just as well. It's just then a question of putting some feet on which I'll show you before the end that you can make yourselves as well. So let's show you how this would look with my legs on. And here we are all put together nice and stable platform adjustable legs as you can see up and down you can take them higher lower whatever you like to do and there's no fixed position for these legs um, I have marked on where I like to have mine uh, with these black uh, markers, but it's entirely up to you how you have it. Um, all that's left now really is to make the top box for it then. So just before moving on from the legs then, I will actually show you how to make the, the feet yourselves. Um, this is actually off one of my other platforms. Um, the leg is slightly thicker, but the, the idea is the same. All I've done is I've gone out and I've bought a bag of chopping boards costs, I don't know, a pound, two pounds, two, three dollars, um, and chopped it up. So that's the base of it. Just made it square. I've rounded the ends off. I've taken some of that one inch angle aluminium and I've just bolted down through. And on this one, I've actually allowed the bolts to stay in the bottom. These are nylon, uh, nylon locking nuts, by the way, or nylon in the UK. I've left those on because I found that if you're on a, a sort of a a stony slope they help you to dig in but literally drill through from one side to the other put a bolt through and you've got a nice adjustable leg very cheap very simple and very effective so now for the top storage box and the padded seat um, this is one I made earlier it was a prototype that actually turned out to be just a little bit the wrong size so a word of warning Always work out what you're going to put in the thing before you decide to, to cut. Save an awful lot of effort. But it's good for the purposes of showing you what I'm doing. So it goes on. It fits perfectly front to rear and side to side above these support beams here. And obviously I've got a padded lid which will be covered with a, a PVC uh, covering at some point. But effectively that's what the thing is going to look like when we're finished, just with the lid to open. Now the good thing about making these boxes is that you can make it to whatever size you like. And in my case, I made the dimensions here and here okay, but as you can see, my thermos flask didn't fit. So I'm going to make this one now 240 millimeters high, so it fits everything in. If you want to have a quick look in here, take out the, the cap. This is my travelling light box, um, got the thermos, bait boxes, maybe for sandwiches as well, um, got some floats, and a box of tackle. Now, 
that's what I want to take with me when I go fishing like. Sometimes I have to walk quite a distance and I'm not getting any younger so frankly I think I need all the help I can get. Anyway, having now decided that uh, this is going to be 240 millimeters high, I'm going to crack on and start cutting all the, the side pieces and the base piece. It's going to be cut out of 6 millimeter plywood. Uh, you can buy it, as you can see, not a huge piece, but this is the local DIY store again, fairly cheap. I've used marine grade, it is a bit heavier. Um, but because it's marine grade, if it does get wet constantly, um, it's not going to, to blister and fall apart. Having said that, we're going to finish it off with um, paint anyway, so it probably should never um, have that issue. I just like to do belt and, belt and braces sometimes on these things. But that's probably going to be about enough for me to, to build the box. That's the two sides and two backs cut. I'll just give them a quick rub over with the sander here, just to make sure we've got a nice smooth finish. Do that all the way around on all of the cut edges. And then we can think about putting the thing together. So as you can see, by just having two pieces of six millimeter plywood, trying to um, nail them or even try and screw them together like that just wouldn't work. So what I'm gonna do, is I've just grabbed a piece of scrap wood and I'm just going to cut this down to 15 millimeters square. I'll glue these uprights to the uh, inside of the box. I'll probably just pin them first of all just to, to let the glue go off. But once that's dry then I can actually start attaching the sides as well. So that's the four uprights cut and these are the two side panels. So the only thing I have to do now is to glue these onto the edges of the side panels but you'll notice there's a, a small gap down here. Now that's going to be for the base of the box. And assuming this is a base, if I put that in there like that, you'll see that it actually is a six millimeter gap. And that means that the base is going to be inserted and just sit neatly inside there. And normally I'd use a hammer and nails, but I've invested in a brad nailer for this. So hopefully this next bit's going to go really quick. Now this bit's always a bit fiddly. I'm going to put some PVA glue just on one face. Don't go too mad. And then I have to use the back plate here. Keep that there. Put this on. And just squeeze it down. Now your problem is that sometimes it moves. So push down first of all, wipe off the excess glue and have a quick look, see where you're at, keeping pressure on it. Now that, at that point there is fine, it's just a little bit moved out here. So there we go. Okay, make sure it's pushed all the way back. And then, there we go, one. Two. I'm just going to check to make sure I haven't gone off or anything. That seems pretty much perfect to me there. Quick wipe off any excess glue. I'll put one more brad nail just in the middle. And I wouldn't worry about any marks on there. That's going to be covered up later. There'll be a decorative piece that goes on there. Just got to clean up that little piece of glue there. And then once we've got that done, I just repeat the process for the other three uprights. It's been about half an hour since I put the glue onto the uprights. And obviously the glue's nowhere near dry yet, but it's started to go off just a little bit. And I want to get this box finished quickly because I want to use it next week for a fishing trip I've got planned. So the plan is that I get some PVA glue on the surfaces here. Then we get a little bit onto the plywood as well. Okay, it's just loose fitted at the moment. I'm going to offer the front up to it. And then to make sure that this is correct, I've just got a piece of scrap angle. There we go. If I now 
push against it at the top and the bottom and clamp, I can then get a brad nail in there. Now obviously it's moved out the bottom but that's okay because I'll be doing the same again now here. Pushing again from the inside to make sure it's lined up but clamping and another nail. Quick look to see how we are on the edge, just wipe the glue off. Oh, still weeping glue. And it's always a good idea to do this with your finger because it's a very sensitive tool to make sure everything's flush and that is absolutely flush. So I repeat the process on the other four and we're almost good to go for the day. While I'm waiting for all that glue to dry, I've cut the, the base for it. And as you can see, it just inserts neatly into the recess, which we created before. Okay, that's the, the base done, but it needs to be held in place and we have the same issues as we had previously. We need to have something to uh, nail into. So I'm gonna take these strips and I'm going to nail them in and glue them so they're like that all the way around the inside. Once that's dry, I can glue and nail the, the base in position and we'll be getting close towards being finished for the day. That's the basic box together. As you can see, there's some glue still drying in there, but we're pretty much there now. The only thing I have to do finally tonight is to glue some strips around this top edge just to reinforce this and stop it from flexing like that. It would probably be okay anyway, but again, a bit of belt and braces for something like that sort of uh, piece of strip there. It doesn't weigh much, so I'll go around and I'll just create a, a top strip. And anyway, when we've got to get the hinges on, we need something else to, to screw into for that. Well, that's as much as I can do for tonight, folks. Um, it's taking me pretty much most of the day to get to this stage, but all I've got to do next is to sand all this down once it's dry tomorrow. Um, I'll get a couple of coats of paint on it and that, that'll take up most of the day. So it'll probably be another day or two before everything's finished. Um, obviously I've still got to put a lid on it. I've got to upholster the, um, the lid with the, the sponge on top. I've got to get a strap and some catches and some hinges. Not that much to do really, it's just a bit time consuming. Anyway, see you shortly.